Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Real Life Fishing. So, I realize it's been a while since I've done a video, and uh, yet again, a lot of friends are giving me crap. Hey, where have you been? What are you doing? How come there's no videos? Here we are. This is what I've been doing. We are down in my workshop now. And you can see that there's some baits hanging here. Bunch of eyes. Here's all the flashaboo that I was using to uh, make those bucktails. But uh, yeah, look, we got a bunch of uh, bunch of epoxy. <clears throat> so what what are we doing here? We have been making hard baits for musky. Um, currently working on some uh, seven inch perch. Um, a little crankbait, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, I got a, a whole bunch of uh, Createx colors and airbrush, and I've had to learn how to work all this stuff. Um, all of this is is new to me, but uh, yeah, I got uh, I got really tired of paying twenty five and thirty dollars for plastic lures. That just end up like this. I don't know if you can see that in the in the video, but you know that's actually a groove that's worn into the back of this bait from the hooks because uh, they're just cheap plastic, you know, whatever. Um, that's nonsense as far as I'm concerned. I mean, spending spending that kind of. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's a nice bait. It catches fish, right? But in terms of quality. You know, 25 bucks or 30 bucks for something that, you know, you get grooves in and, and it just, it gets all beat up. I mean, that, that's not the, the reason that I started that, that bait. There was another one that I paid 30 bucks for and uh, 10 casts in and the paint was flaking off already. And I was just like, that's it. This is horse shit. I'm building my own baits. So I started doing that and uh, it turns out it's not quite as easy as I thought it would be, but... Um, Here's a bunch of bunch of stuff I'm working on. So, you know, these these start as just a, a board, right? I got a couple of a couple of boards there in the corner. Um, but so cut those down to size on trusty old bandsaw, and then hit them with the belt sander a little to get them to be the right shape. And you end up with something that's about this shape here. And then we uh, take them over to the trusty drill press right there and we give them some eyes and drill holes for the lead and for the hook hangers and the tow hook and the tail hook all that stuff drill all those holes and then I was uh, rounding them off manually with uh, a pocket knife or a chisel and a bunch of sandpaper so here's one of those examples um, you know, pretty, uh, pretty nice looking, right? Um, and the ones that I'll show you that are over uh, with the epoxy curing in them here, um, those I, I did by hand as well. But uh, yeah, so the problem with this one is uh, I didn't have a drill press yet. <clears throat> so <clears throat> look at that. That hole's pretty centered, right? Yeah, well, hopefully you can see this. There's the other end of that hole. Talk about crooked. So this blank is garbage um you know it's already got the lead in it you know weighted this would have been a good one to to finish up but no it's trash so uh anyway uh, after carving the last batch of eight by hand and sandpapering them down and everything else um that was just entirely too slow couldn't couldn't deal with it way too slow uh so i picked up this uh this bosch router table and now you know, here's here's some of the uh, the blanks, right? So they, I got them to this stage here. I've got a whole box of them actually that I've gotten this far already. You know, holes and, and all everything's all drilled on them. And then I just fire up this uh, this router table, and they come out of the router table like this. They still need some some sandpaper work, but this is way faster than uh, rounding off those edges with uh, 
sandpaper or with a chisel or a pocket knife or, you know, how I was doing it before. Um, and it's still pretty manual. I mean, this is not a, uh, a motorized or, or, you know, robotic fed, um, you know, uh, router table here. So I, I still have to feed all these things through by hand. And, and there's some, some variation between them in terms of, you know, exactly where that round over happens on the back. You know, if we take a look at a couple of these, you can, you can see a few spots that are wider than others. And then uh, some of these, you know, I've got kind of a lip on there. I had the, the router edge standing up a little too high, right? So that's got to be knocked down. Uh, a few different things, but I picked up another uh, picked up another router bit today. Um, so hopefully this one will do a, a little bit better job for me. I was using a uh, quarter inch radius as a five sixteenths. So we're gonna we're gonna try that out. <clears throat> see if that does a, a better job at you know not having this this edge on there. But uh, yeah, anyway, I've got a whole box of these things here that I've already gotten cut down that far. So. We'll take a look here. So yeah, I'm using a, a Bosch router table. And then this is just a uh, uh, belt sander from uh, um, Harbor Freight. It works fine. Don't let anybody tell you different. Um, I had a cheaper bandsaw. I got a, a little bit nicer one. Uh, so this is a, a Rikon 10 inch. Um, I've got a, a few different blades for it. <clears throat> um, it does come with a fence, which is nice. Um, <laughs> So here's the, the fence for it. Fence just slides right on like so. And now you've got a fence. Um, <clears throat> got a couple of blades for it. And then uh, I picked up this, uh, this drill press here. Um, nothing fancy, got it at the local big box, but it works pretty well. So here's the, uh, the three baits that we've got. Um, and this is my epoxy drying rig. Uh, this is just a barbecue rotisserie that I got from Amazon. Um, so it just sits here and spins these things while the epoxy cures. And uh, they're, they're about due for another layer of epoxy. So I need to get off of this video and get to work on that. But I uh, wanted to show you guys what I've been up to. Yeah, so there's, uh, there's the, the three baits that have come out of that batch of eight so far. Um, I'm not entirely pleased with, uh, with this lure turner. Um, it's kind of difficult to, uh, to get the epoxy on there. Um, I'm not sure yet what I'm going to, how I'm going to handle that or what I'm going to do about it. At the time that I, I put that together, it seemed like a, a good plan. Yeah, no problem. I should be able to fit eight baits on there, but I don't know. It's, uh, it's kind of tight. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll see, but I'm going to get another another layer of epoxy on these, another coat of epoxy on them, and uh, get these things ready. Um, it's already winter way up here in Wisconsin. Boats, uh, boats put away, but I've got some guys down in uh, Tennessee and Kentucky that, uh, that have agreed to fish these for me uh, and provide some feedback. So um, I need to get these things uh, shipped out the door, and um, we'll see what they think of them. But... I've got a, a few more that I've got to I've got to get made yet too, so I've got enough to get out. But uh, well, that's what I've been up to. So hopefully you guys are still out catching fish while I'm frozen in up here. But uh, yeah, we'll we'll make some videos uh, in a little more detail coming up here uh, about how I've been making these baits. But um, first, I'd like to get a little more practice under my belt. I don't quite. Uh, feel that I'm good enough yet to be teaching anybody how to do this. I'm still struggling figuring some of it out on my own. So, but that's what I've been up to. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, don't forget, hit the like button down there and hit the subscribe button. And thanks. See you next time.